Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Paula with Automated Dynamics. I'm a field applications engineer. And for today's video, I'm gonna show you the SX5 safety scanner. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the hardware and then also show you an overview of the safety software. There are some features that we have that I think are really worth mentioning because it makes this product really stack up well against the competition. So let's get into the video. So as far as the hardware goes, it can do up to 5.5 meters within the safety zone, and then it can go out to 40 meters in the warning zone. So you can have multiple warning zones as well. Um, and then also it has a really fast response time. You can have different safety zones. So for different zone type applications, and I'll post some videos here that kind of go over those specific applications, it can handle that. And it has that 275 degree wide angle, so you can actually protect an entire corner, and whereas some other more limited range competitors, you might actually have to have like multiple safety scanners. So ultimately, you know, just having that wide angle can save you some money on your application as well. Okay, so as far as the safety software goes, it's free software, first of all, so you can download that right now off of our website. And let me walk you through some of the features I like to mention when I'm doing demonstrations of this product with customers. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm already connected. So I will just go into the modify safety system configuration, but you can just like monitor things directly from here as well. So that's kind of neat as well. Um, if I do a discovery, it should just go out and find it. Even if I'm not on the same LAN, I'll double click now as well and go into that by clicking the next arrow. I like this software because it gives you kind of like that wizard tool wizard kind of feeling and so it just really guides you and helps commissioning this device a lot quicker so as i click the next button here it's going to download whatever is already in there and i want to go through some of these pages just to kind of help guide you as you commission your device as well so you understand what some of these things mean and some of the more common questions that i get when i'm doing some of these demonstrations so for example number one application scenario um, what this is asking you is this is this uh, going to be a vertical application or a horizontal application but we call it expert so um you know that's something that kind of uh, gets people a little bit and so why they're asking you that is because if you are doing a horizontal or vertical application, the vertical mounting, OSHA actually regulates that uh, specifically you have to have reference points in there. So the software will take care of incorporating that into your application as you commission this device. So that's kind of nice. You know, we have those built-in features. So I'll just click the next button in this page, we're configuring out outputs. I like the fact that Banner uh, just kind of color codes the wires for you and you can switch around the functions that each wire is going to do. So in this case, we can have multiple zones here for the warning and we can have a muting lamp as well and assign those features accordingly. So I'll go ahead and click the next button. So zone sets, okay, so a lot of people have questions on what exactly is zone sets in this part of the software. And so here's a few pictures that I'm gonna post up about different applications that require different zone set configurations. So if, for example, you were in, you had an application with an AGV, you would use inputs on the safety scanner to tell it to run different zones at specific times. So I can set each zone as these sensors turn on, it will tell me, you know, do zone set one, zone set two, etc. On this particular device, I only have two zone sets available, but in our higher end products, you can do like, I think up to 70 zone sets. So that's pretty neat as well. And this is where you would tie those sensors in to tell the scanner which zone set to execute. So I'll go ahead and click the next button. Oops. So 
I go back to just one zone set so it doesn't keep barking at me. And I will go ahead and click the next button. Okay, so the input configuration, this part is really just, it's asking me um, automatic reset or a manual reset, and that's always gonna vary depending on your application. So, you know, the end users are responsible for doing risk assessments on your machines and figuring out whether or not this needs to be a manual or an automatic reset. And if it's a manual reset for whatever reason, this is where you would assign the pin number to that reset button. But we're gonna keep this to an automatic. I'll click the next button now. Okay, so we've reached the detection configuration part of this where I really wanted to go in and show you the, some of the built-in features that we have that some people might kind of gloss over or you might not realize we have these. So for example, in this, we have the safety zone and then we have the warning zone. So for each zone, we can have specific filters. For example, we have uh, the number of scans. Um, and what this does is it tells you how many scans it needs to have before, before it actually gives you an alarm. So, uh, and then as you increase this number, you see that the response time will keep going up. And so this is a number that you have to watch out for depending on the risk assessment that you did on your machine. And the, you know, there's actually a safety calculation that you have to work in to figure out how fast your application response time needs to be. So, you know, you, some safety people know that. <clears throat> And so we do provide that information. Um, and then there's a really cool dust filter feature that we have. You can set it to low, medium, high. And this really helps obviously for dust and you know just particles in the air. So that really you know helps overcoming challenging applications. We had one application one time for a potato chip company and they wanted to make sure that they weren't gonna get any false trips for the safety scanner if a potato flew into that zone. And so, you know, that those kind of things are where we can apply these filters. So as we increase the number of scan, the number of scans before it remains in that condition, before it sends an alarm, here is where um, we played around with that, made sure the response time was you know, within the right tolerance, and we were able to get rid of those nuisance alarms that sometimes trigger safety outputs to turn the machine off. So I'll click next now, and this is where we do the teach in feature. So here we have a button called the teach in, and it just went out, I'm connected live right now, so it went out and all the gray area is where I've got, you know, walls or just stuff in the way. <clears throat> so if I click here on the safety and I highlight it, it's gonna give me this safety zone. I can, I can edit this by clicking on the shapes, click the edit button and move this out a little bit more. Maybe I wanna edit that. Maybe if I click on the warning zone, I wanna get rid of the square, for example. I'll click on that polygon shape and just click delete. And maybe I wanna make this safety zone a little bit bigger, or maybe, um, so I'll make this a little bit bigger now. So this is how you program the teach in function. I have another video that I made where I uh, go over this a little bit more in depth. I do have a, a pencil that I can use. I can do a polygon, arc, a circle. Um, I can actually insert the coordinates manually if that's important to you. And I'll just go ahead and click the next button. I forgot to mention, let me go back. I forgot to mention the reference point. The reference point is there in case you're, or if you're facing this down vertically in a vertical application, uh, you need a reference point. So if the safety scanner falls or anything, or it loses its reference point, maybe there's a lot of vibration in the area or something becomes, whatever the case may be, uh, the reference point, um, you can have it set there so that this point will always be there. And so that's also uh, really helpful. So if you have, if you 
when you begin the program, if you had it set for vertical application, it, this won't let you advance unless you mark your reference point. So I thought that was also worth mentioning. So let's go ahead and move on now and it should allow me now to load my program onto my device. So I can click the load button here and it actually is going to take a little bit of time and the default password is going to be admin and that's in the user manual as well. So this is going to take a little while. Uh, once it finishes over here on the validation portion you can click accept and you notice that this PDF is generated with all of the wiring, all the parameters that we set in there is going to be made in a PDF form. So you can print that and put it in your machine. So the next time that OSHA visits you, you have something to show or also just to share it with your panel building people, whoever's you know wiring everything up. It's a good point of reference. So people seem to really like that as well. Okay, so I sped up the video a little bit so that you didn't have to wait through all that. So I'm just gonna click the next button and now I'm just at the monitoring page. So I can zoom in here a little bit more and you can see what's going on as I get closer here with my hand to it. You notice I go into the warning zone and it goes into the safety zone. You can take screenshots of this as well if that helps. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Uh, thank you for watching it. And um, if you have any questions, make sure and contact your local rep for additional support. See you on the next video.